It's cold in it, right? Cold. It was cold in the Board of Estimates. Really? Yeah. There's a draft. There's a draft on that door behind the door. Did you turn it? The little thing on. How's everybody doing today? I'm good. Ready? All right. So thank you again for um, thank you for joining me today. Uh, before taking questions, I want to talk briefly about an agenda item that was on the BOE, and I believe uh, will make our police force stronger in the fight against violent offenders and uh, will help us reduce in violent crime. The Baltimore City Gunshot Detection Initiative will uh, provide the police department with the technology to receive real-time notification of gunshot locations in the eastern and the western sections of the city. These efforts will enable law enforcement to better locate gun offenders and pinpoint uh, locations uh, of the relative, act, uh, the related activity. Armed with that information, the uh, Baltimore Police Department can improve its response time to the scene and capture information to enhance investigations of gun-related violence in our city. Data and experience tells us tell us that too many people in Baltimore City uh, possess illegal guns, and uh, they repeatedly use them to shoot and to kill. And half of all Baltimore's homicide suspects have prior gun arrests, and nearly 90% of all homicide suspects and victims have a criminal past. So the eastern and western sections were chosen because of the high concentration of reported discharge call, discharging gun discharge calls and gun-related crime in those communities. We've worked relentlessly over the past three years to develop uh, sophisticated infrastructure to, to analyze crime. However, the data sources supplying the infrastructure are infrastructure not where they need to be in order to combat violent crime and to continue to target repeat offenders. This initiative can help us get us to where we need to be. It's similar to our efforts to better utilize uh, the technology in helping officers to process reports um, out in the field and uh, expanding the way that we use our watch center. <clears throat> Today was just the first step uh, in the work needed to bring new, this technology to Baltimore. There's still much more work that needs to be done, but I think we're moving in the right direction. Thanks. How does it work? Um, it is a technology that uses uh, sound to identify um, when a shot is uh, determined and if it is on a, the, if that shot spotter is on the same pole as a camera, the camera can automatically go to where the, the, the detect, where it's detected, the, it's detected location. Do you know if any other cities are using this on a big scale? Uh, on a big scale, I do not know, but definitely other cities are using this technology. Were you impressed with any one city? I was impressed with it overall. Okay. I think um, the technology has improved. Um, this, the, this is something, uh, this type of technology has been around for a long time, but uh, the, the commitment of the, the uh, vendor has been to improve the technology year over year, and I think the technology has uh, increased to the point where it can be something that we can use reliably uh, to uh, improve intelligence uh, gathering in the city. Mayor Buster, the um, lieutenant governor of the city, does now support, at least my interpretation, where it says decriminalization of small amounts of marijuana. Um, has your position changed, or do you still think it should be a crime? Uh, my position hasn't changed. He argued it was a criminal justice issue in terms of, you know, Yeah, I, I get it, but I just, um, I, I will be very careful with my words in the sense that um, it is something that personally and, excuse me, and as mayor, I am uh, taking a look at and doing more research in. My position hasn't changed. I know that probably is a little disheartening to you. Uh, personally, <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, it, it hasn't changed. We're, we're st I'm just joking. If that is okay, um, but no, but I, no, 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 but no, it, it hasn't changed. But in, and I'm I'm saying this to say I think there is time for me and other elected officials around the state to to do more research and to further develop our positions because I do not think it's going anywhere this session. Well, my concern would be, like any other person who lives in the city, is that we have, you know, we have violence is increasing. 
lot of unsolved murders, and yet you have at least 4,000 arrests for minor possession of marijuana, which disproportionately affects the African American community. So that, that would be the concern as a reporter more than any personal thing. So how do you address people like when you're saying, hey, we can't solve murders, but we can arrest people for marijuana, small possession? I mean, don't you see where there might be a policy issue there? I I totally see where there's a policy issue. I also know that um, in in many communities, uh, marijuana is uh, just one of many things that the individuals are uh, in possession of. And I also know from experience with the public defender's office that in some cases it can, you know, it, it starts with marijuana, it leads to other things. That's why diversion programs uh, were created to try to, you know, divert people off the path of, you know, going into harder and harder drugs. That's why I said I'm certainly um, looking at this, my team is looking at this, uh, further developing a position for when I think it will, the, the question will become right in Annapolis. Uh, Madam Mayor, there's been uh, a rash of closures and layoffs in particularly the southeast portion of the city or close to it, uh, St. Alex yesterday, and they're distributing for that in Mars. What are your concerns about the closures and loss of jobs there, and what can be done about it? A couple of things. With respect to um, the Sun Products, you know, we have reached out uh, to the state, um, to Dollar with the state, and uh, they have, uh, they're working with the staff with their dislocated worker unit to participate in uh, helping uh, the, the dislocated uh, workers as a result of the closure. BDC reached out uh, to the local company as well as the parent company. Um, we found out uh, the same way everyone else did. It wasn't like some other uh, companies that are weighing a decision and uh, want to talk to us about, you know, maybe negotiating um, things differently to put them in a better economic position. They they made a corporate decision and informed us when everybody um, else was uh, informed. That being said, uh, we will continue to reach out to the parent company because, as I mentioned before, um, it, First, nobody wants to see any of these places closed. Um, and we're certainly interested in helping the, the workers that, have been, that will be displaced. That being said, with the um, increase in manufacturing that's coming back to our country, I think we have uh, a uniquely, uh, we have a unique opportunity. The, the, the workforce that we have, um, the infrastructure that we have in that area, uh, I think puts us in a, a decent place to expand. Um, so we will be looking for ways that we can increase those opportunities. I mean, you know, Amazon is down there, and um, I think I think there'll be opportunities. Is there any concern though that the jobs that will come back? These are primarily union and power jobs. Is there any concern that the jobs that we're replacing them with won't pay or have the same level of benefits as the ones we're losing? That's always a concern, and you know the part of doing the the work on BDC side and ours is to make sure that as we um, we advocate and as we you know trying to make Baltimore a more attractive place for people to open businesses that we think broadly and make sure that we have a diverse offering of. Uh, jobs. So, um, with with the manufacturing opportunities, there'll be those opportunities at many different um, salary levels. I don't. I can't say that there will be a one for one replacement, uh, but I can say that that's something that we're sensitive to as we uh, advocate for more uh, Why jobs in the city. Perceived that Baltimore. It's not like manufacturers are knocking down the door of mm -hmm. Baltimore or Maryland. What's the problem? Considering that Baltimore has a very successful port and uh, really uniquely positioned in that regard. I will say um, I don't, I can't agree or disagree that they're not knocking down the door. I can say that it's something that is very important to me, and I've instructed uh, BDC that this is an opportunity that we should be working very um, hard on and in coordination with Maryland Manufacturing to see how we can make uh, Baltimore more attractive to more manufacturing opportunities. So I don't know, I, I couldn't tell you today why or why not uh, more companies are interested, but I can tell you that I think that it's an opportunity that we have to take advantage of and find an answer to that question so we can bring more, bring more opportunities to Baltimore. 
I did a story yesterday on this backdrop of your um, rollout of the, the zone concept, mm -hmm. um, tallying up with a cost, and this, the number is a little, it's probably a conservative number. Mm -hmm. There's certain things we didn't include in it, other things you have to kind of estimate because of the way the state budget lays out. But um, the total, co the direct cost mm -hmm. of policing, prosecuting, jailing, detaining, et cetera, in the city, just in the city, is just over a billion dollars a year. Mm -hmm. That's an enormous number for, um, I think what many people would say is kind of the same result year to year to year. That I means sure there's some fluctuation in property crime and robbery, et cetera, et cetera, but obviously the homicide number, the shooting number, they're very stubborn. How do you, how do you, uh, well, I mean, what do you think of when you look at the, a number like that? And you see it, you, mm -hmm. you see these numbers because you know what this, what's in the city budget, you know what's in the state budget. So I, I see the numbers and I also see opportunities. So when I, when I talk about rolling out different things, we are constantly looking for ways to make Baltimore dramatically safer city. So when I you know, talk about ceasefire or the increased technology uh, with the, the shot spotter or the, the uh, reward uh, that we're, we're significantly increasing the uh, reward money for people that are turning in guns, we're always looking for ways to, uh, to reach the goal of having a safer city. And you know, I don't. I wish it were. You know, I certainly wish Baltimore and the state um, didn't have a one billion dollar you know public safety budget. I know that uh, all of us probably in this room and out in the city could think of a whole lot of uh, other ways to use that money. Um, but we have a significant uh, problem uh, in Baltimore and in you know many other places in the country with persistent violent crime. And my commitment is to look for ways to enhance what we're doing to get better results, uh, because I think every community deserves, um, you know, every every citizen deserves to feel safe in their community. And I will continue to look for ways to get there effectively and efficiently. I guess the follow-up to that is that this is an entire industry. I mean, there are thousands of jobs, <coughs> thousands of jobs that are dependent on that expenditure. Is that a factor in? Not in my mind. In the sense that I'm, I'm, you know, I'm looking to put Baltimoreans to work uh, in, you know, s small businesses and the the businesses we attract. Um, I'm not at all interested in the job security of, you know, the, the, the industry that, um, you know, our, our fight on crime supports in any, in any sense. There's been a lot of attention um, nationally, the White House is talking in the, in the state um, about um, increased investment in pre-K. Mm -hmm. um, the city's investment in the school system is about, it's a pretty, pretty static number, it's about 225. I know that's mostly a state venture. Um, so in terms of thinking outside the box, has, it, has anyone in the, city, in, in the city's administration said, you know, maybe we're going to take some of that money, that billion dollars, and reapply it? The public safety money? Yeah. Is that probably, that, that is well, I mean, we could say, you could say anything. You could say, let's take the office supply money and put it to you know, to early childhood education. I don't think it's, we don't sit around and do those, those one-offs. You know, it's a, is this an important issue? Then we figure out how we, we make um, the most effective and efficient decisions in that area. Early childhood is in very important. And, um, you know, I certainly support ways that we can expand those opportunities. I think that's one of the best things that we can do for our kids is to uh, give them more early childhood uh, opportunities. That's why I'm excited about the work that uh, that we're doing with Head Start because it's not, you know, we're expanding it and we're seeing results um, with the the work that we're doing with Head Start. And I'm looking forward to, to doing more of that because we know that it prepares young people for school and it keeps them on the right track longer. Um, I want to follow up with something. Um, you mentioned in your State of the City address mm -hmm. the apartment tax credits on building more apartments. 
Um, I spoke with the developer yesterday, and he voiced some concern that we may be encouraging our apartment building bubble, and that we may have outstripped the demand if we continue to build apartments and continue to put emphasis on that. What are your thoughts about those comments? I think the the market balances that out in the sense that um, there is a, a um, in at least in the downtown area, the residential market can't keep up with demand, and because of that, lenders believe that it continues to be a good in investment to uh, to do conversion pro projects. Um, if that were to change, and the um, you know the the vacancy rate were to um, increase, it would become less attractive uh, for investment, and you know that's where the, the market balances it out. <laughs> it's nice to me. I love it. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure. You're going to talk later about storm prep. Am I correct? I am so over this winter. <laughs> and normally, I, you know, I like it, you know, because you, know, you get to snuggle, you get to wear all your heavy stuff. <laughs> but I'm, if it, if I never see snow again, it will be too soon. I was with. Came, some, when you came in, it was. I know. I know. But I was with some people over the weekend from uh, Brazil, and they'd never seen snow before. And they, I was like, <laughs> it's like it gets really old, really, really, um, really, really quickly. Have you? I mean, is there a special challenge posed by what we're expecting over the next forty-eight hours? The 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 particular challenge in this one. Think about the, well, think about the derecho in the sense that it was that wide band. So the places where we would get resources from normally, we're all scrambling for resources too. That's because of that wide band, that's the sort of thing that we're dealing with. Not, it's, it's not the derecho in the sense that we have advanced preparation for exactly what we think is going to happen. But because of that wide band, it's going from, I think, Texas all the way up to New England. Um, what we know in advance is that every area is going to be fighting, scrapping uh, for for resources. So that's why we have to be very intentional. You know, we, we started something new this, uh, I think it was this fiscal year, with putting contracts in place um, to, like on-call contracts with the contractors that can help us to uh, attack the the uh, residential streets at the same time. Our equipment is doing the, the, uh, the primary roads, primary and secondary roads. And we've seen, um, in, I would say, you know, with the all of we haven't done all the analysis, but anecdotally, what we're hearing from communities is they're seeing a big difference with that. So we have to remember that, you know, that you know we have to make sure that that is in place and solid. And it's 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 just been a crazy uh, winter. I mean, you know, people are calling from you know different places asking for salt, and I'm like, you know, we love you, but we, you can't, you know, you can only share what you can spare. And you, the city sells twice good shape. We're good. I'm, I'm saying that, you know, there are other places that are, it's just, you know, that's why I said I'm over it. <laughs> very much, very much over it. Anything else? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks a lot.